everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be painting on this. This is a burlap canvas. So I was at my local Kmart the other day looking at the stationery stuff and my boyfriend pointed out something to me and it was this pack of two burlap stretch canvases. And I just thought that these were so cool and I just had to get them and try them out. So let's get this bad boy open and see what's the go with it. Now I've never actually seen a burlap canvas before. I have seen something slightly similar and it was a, uh, a linen canvas but it was pretty much the same thing as a normal canvas without the gesso. This stuff is completely different. It's got this sort of raw, rustic sort of feeling that I think would be really cool to make like a painting on. So there is two canvases in this pack, but I'm just going to be using one today. So as you can see, the weave on this uh, sort of fabric is really thick. It's also quite wiry and there's a lot of sort of loose threads coming out. And to be honest, I just think that's really cool. I've never seen a canvas like this. I'm not sure if this is really a common thing or not, but I've never seen canvases with raw burlap on them. So yeah, I'm actually pretty excited. So let's get into it. Now to begin, I was kind of nervous because I didn't know how a pencil would lay down on this sort of thick, you know soft kind of thread <laughs> so I just used my softest lead pencil that I could find and I just did a rough sketch outline of my artwork now I couldn't really get any crazy details or anything like that because there are a lot of holes in this canvas but I got a nice little foundation for what I can begin with as you can see I am drawing a little cat here and what is going next to the cat well that is a plant for this drawing, I wanted to draw something slightly witchy feeling, but it kind of just looks normal, but it has that sort of aesthetic. Now, what do witches love? Well, they love cats and they love plants. Maybe I'm a witch. But anyways, uh, to begin painting, I am just mixing up some nice gray paint here and I added a little bit of storm blue in there just so that it had a little bit more saturation. I didn't want it to be completely uh, grayscale. Now, first impressions, it was actually quite hard for me to spread the paint around on this canvas. As you can probably guess, uh, burlap is a little bit absorbent, so it's not going to spread as nicely as it would say on a uh, primed canvas. But I got there in the end. I kind of just lightly smeared the paint around until I had a nice sort of even-ish layer, which I would then let dry and then paint over the top. This painting was in a few layers as well. I say that there are a bunch of stages to this before we can actually get to the final result. So right now I'm just adding a little bit of white here to begin uh, the lights and the shades of the pattern of the cat's fur coat. I would say this is more of an underpainting that I'm doing first here because most of this is going to be covered up. This is pretty much just for me to get my foundations of where I want the lights and the darks in the patterns. Now I decided on a grey tabby cat because I wanted to do something slightly witchy feeling. However, I didn't want to go for your typical black cat because you know, that's just a little bit too cliche for me. So I decided on a gray or silver tabby. I just really like that fur pattern and the colors look pretty cool too. Well, maybe the absence of color, I should say. Now I have to say it does look kind of creepy with the face sort of uh, non-defined as it is at this stage. It's like kind of blurred out, kind of looks a little bit creepy, but I think that's funny. So with the pot plan, I wanted to go with uh, black for the pot because I really wanted to push some shadow in there to sort of, you know, uh, bring down those shades so that the highlights would look really nice and bright. And since we don't have a black cat, we're gonna have something else black in there because black is still a witchy color. So now that the cat is completely dry here, I'm going in over the top of my uh, base coat and we are going to be adding in lots of little textures. Now these are basically the uh, highlights for the cat's fur. And uh, this was quite interesting. It was quite slow for me to paint all of these little lines, especially since this canvas is extremely textured. And there's lots of little holes in between the threads as well. So I couldn't get perfect, you know, smooth strokes for those sort of hair fibers. <laughs> I had to sort of just make do with what I had. But I actually really like the overall look. It's got this sort of rustic vibe, which I think really suits the theme. 
but because of the texture of the canvas it did take me quite a lot longer than it usually would have if I was just painting on something smooth I kind of had to go over each stroke just a little bit just to make sure that it looked you know what I, like what I wanted it to look like but it was kind of relaxing in a way well relaxing and also frustrating at the same time if that makes any sense so after I got all of those white strokes on the light grey uh, area of the body of the cat, not the face yet because I haven't done that yet, <laughs> I'm actually going in with a slightly darker grey on the uh, really dark areas of the fur pattern. And I basically do the exact same thing and that's going to build up the fur texture of this cat. Now for the cat's face, it was time to add another layer of detail here. As you can see, it kind of looks all blurred out and mysterious and creepy. But now we're going to define those features and make it look more cute. Now the reference of the cat that I'm using does have sort of lighter patches of fur on its face. So I'm going in with a bit of white here. And I'm just starting with the cat's muzzle and I'm just uh, defining the shape of its cheeks and its chin. And I'm sort of blending out that white paint to the edges where I'm sort of using a more dry brush technique to sort of get it to blend into the darker greys. I feel like the texture of the canvas actually really helped with this because um, with dry brushing you sort of catch a lot of those uh, peaks on the you know roughness of the canvas and it gives it a really nice texture that works pretty well for the fur. Now after I do all of the light areas of the cat, I'm going to go back in with some black. I'm just going to paint in some details here that I need to darken, like the nose and the sort of eyeliner around the cat's eyes and little details here and there. So now I'm just going to go a little bit off topic here. I actually wanted to say that I do have an announcement that I want to tell you guys and that is I have finally launched a Patreon. To be completely honest, I have been wanting to make a Patreon for so long now and uh, I kind of put it off for a while because, uh, I don't know, I just felt like no one would be interested. But I actually want to make art my career, so I was like, you know what, screw it, let's do it. Let's make a Patreon and just see what happens. And I already have three amazing patrons, so shout out to Geek Squeak hybrid and roxy you guys became a patron before i actually officially announced it you guys are epic now i actually have a few different tiers as well i have some really affordable ones down to three dollars a month versus really high end crazy ones that honestly i know no one's going to do but i just put there because crazy things can happen but i am actually having a lot of fun putting in a bonus behind the scenes content and pretty much showing off my art like while i'm actually making it as well so i've been having a lot of fun posting stuff there so yeah if you want to get extra behind the scenes content and sneak peeks of future stuff and you know options to vote in polls and anything like that yeah follow my patreon it is in the link in the description and i would really appreciate it it's not expected obviously i know not everyone can do it but it is really 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 appreciated but anyways, back to the art. <laughs> For the plant, I actually had to do a little bit of research because I wanted to find a sort of interesting plant to use that uh, kind of fitted the theme of witchiness and I wanted something a little bit strange that didn't look, you know, just like a regular boring plant. So I was looking on a few websites and I found a plant called uh, Pil... I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, but Pilia Pup... Pepperomio decides. I have no idea how to say that. It's like a crazy name. But anyway, it's also known as a Chinese money plant, otherwise known as a pancake plant, UFO plant. Uh, it basically has these like really round, weird leaves. And I actually really love the look of it. It looks pretty cool. I'm going to insert a picture of what it looks like just to show you <laughs> and probably how to spell the plant as well because I probably butchered it really bad. So now for the cat's eyes, I wanted to do something a little bit more mysterious and just do something a little bit less, you know, realistic and normal just to give it that weird vibe of something mysterious happening. So I decided to give it purple eyes for the cat with white pupils and I just think it looks so cool and, uh, you know, makes you think is this cat a normal cat or is it like I don't know some kind of creature or maybe a witch that's turned into a cat or maybe it's a witch's familiar who knows 
But yeah, I really enjoyed painting on this burlap canvas. It was something very different than I'm used to, but I really love the raw sort of rustic rattan kind of background that it gives and the whole, the whole aesthetic, it just looks super cool. This was really fun for me and I hope you enjoyed watching as well. Here's the final results and honestly I really love this painting. I feel like it's one of my favourite ones that I've done in a while so far. And I feel like this artwork is actually something that I would display myself as well. I don't actually do that with every single one of my artworks but I really like this one. I feel like I could hang it up somewhere and it would look cool. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please smash that like and subscribe button and comment below what you think of this artwork. I hope you're all having a lovely day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye everyone.